In this video segment for the Grandview Build House for Homes project, we're going to take a look at the framing for the walls. I'm going to begin with looking at the openings and the requirements for the headers. I'm going to go through the garage and place the I-beams to support the walls that are above and the posts. And then finally, I'm going to take a look at creating the construction drawings with the detailed elevation views. The construction drawings, which you can download from our website, are on pages 10 and 11 of the construction drawings. The wall framing, if I zoom in a little bit, you'll notice that the wall openings for the headers are all indicated in here. The structural engineer has given us this information, and before I proceed with the framing, I'm going to start with making sure that we identify what those header openings are. On page 10 of the construction drawings are the shear wall locations and the information required for creating the shear walls on the design. The completed model with the wall framing I have up on my screen. I'm going to go through the steps in the first floor framing and then also on the second floor framing. If you've been following along in the video series, the current state of our plan for framing is to have the foundation floor framed and then the second floor. Now as I begin the framing, let's take a look at building our framing underneath the build framing menu. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the automatic build wall framing and then I'll eventually turn that off. There is a openings panel under framing that has your span table for four different spans. And you can see that the defaults used for this plan start at a 2x8 and go down to a 2x12. You can specify the number of trimmers and then the component thickness. When the automatic framing is on and we return to our camera view, the program will typically do a very good job of creating your framing. And as I said, I want to go in on some of these openings and override what the default span table is so I can change the header openings for the garage and some of the windows that the structural engineer has called out for. I'm going to begin with the garage door. Let's take a look at the opening span. Inside of the door and window specification, there is a framing panel. Underneath the framing panel is the option for your header information. If you uncheck the default default option, you can include the header and the information and make adjustments to it. In this case, I'm going to change this to be a glue lamb. And again, if you uncheck the default information, I now have access to this. Turns out that the information for the glue lamb is a 5 and an 8th, and I'm only going to use one, and the depth is 12 inches. Let's take a look at the other garage door, and I'm going to go in, remove the default, change it to a glue lamb. Again, 5 eighths count, and in this case, the depth is called out for this one to be 14 and an eighth. When you select a wall, you'll get an option in the et lower edit menu to take a look at the wall detail. In the wall detail, you can select the framing member, and you'll notice that the dimension is accurate at 14 and an eighth. Also, you can open up these individual components and change that information right in here. However, if you do that, you'll be turning off your automatic framing. On the next opening, let's take a look at the entry door and transom window. On the framing panel, I'm going to change the count to 3, which is called out by the engineer. And then for the depth of the structural, let's go ahead and change that to be a 2 by 12. And then by choosing the wall and the wall detail, you can see the detail on that framing for the entry. Now the next opening, let's take a look at the master. And again, this is a mold unit as well. Let's open this up and take a look. Again, I'm going to override the default in here. This needs to be a 2 by 12. Let's go ahead and change this to be a 2 by 12. Now when you initially set up your windows, you may set up a header, but then when you block them and mold them, that header information will change and you may need to go back in and revisit that. Let's go ahead and close this and open up the wall detail. And in the wall detail, you see the 2 by 12. Now notice that the relative height of this window, let's go back into the window itself. From the floor plan, if I go back into the window general properties, most of my windows I had set up at 96 and 3 8 floor to top. You need to be aware that if your windows are too high relative in that wall, your headers may not be able to fit into that condition. A lot of times I will always make sure that I open up the wall detail and verify the header height. Automatic framing is a great way to start, and then you can always manually override it. If we select this back wall, open up the wall detail. If you want to make changes to this, let's say you want to make this header go all the way across, you can do the manual editing on this wall. That will turn off the automatic framing, and if you rebuilt the framing, it would override it. So usually when you're going to manually edit the framing detail, you want to save that to the very end. The process of editing this is pretty easy. I'll just come in, pull these 
items down and I'll just snap this into this area. Again, they're going to get a notification that it's going to turn off the automatic framing and I'm going to delete the two headers in this area. Do the same thing over in this area. Again, delete these two headers. I'm going to select one of these headers, pull it back so I can get the one behind it, pull it all the way across until it snaps into place. And again, if you're using a glue lamb beam, you may want to change that to a single structural element. And now I've manually edited this framing on this wall. So again, use the automatic framing to get you as far along as you can, and then use the manual framing at the end to make minor modifications as you need to. You've seen the way you can open up a wall and get a single wall framing detail. In the drawing that I've created you see on the screen, I've actually created a single section view to produce all of the walls. Now that does clip a little bit of the corners, but it does allow you, if I zoom in a little bit, to see an entire section and run of the wall. Let me show you how to use the back clip cross section and create breaks in it to shape it around the design to produce a drawing that looks like this. Using the back clip cross section camera, I'm going to start the view down here over the garage. And I'm just going to create a small section that goes right through the wall. And your default view might be a section view set. I've created a new layer set that only turns on the framing components. I've called it the section view framing. When I turn this layer set on, it will isolate only those layers that I want to see. A layer set is a collection of different layers that are turned on or off. You can have many different layer sets and you can quickly use these layer sets to turn those layers you want to see. In the cross section you're only seeing that small section of the garage. Let's go back into the floor plan view and make an adjustment to that camera so we can start to extend that around the house for the entire front view. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the camera and I'm going to make a couple of changes. I like to give my cameras a good descriptive name on the camera information. On the plan view, let's also come in here and what I want to do is I want to indicate for that call out that it is on both sides. Naming the camera and putting the call out on both sides. Once you've done that, I'm going to go ahead and crop this camera view in so it's right on the edge of the wall. Let me zoom in so you can see what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go ahead, let's, let's pull this camera and extend it the entire length of the building. While this camera is selected, notice down in the lower edit menu there is a break option. Again, this is the number three on the keyboard. I'm going to come in here and create a break right about where that wall jog is. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit so you can see where I've created that. Now I can pull this section camera with the move handle in through that wall. Back in the section view, you now see both of those walls through a back clip cross section. Let's go back into the floor plan view and make more adjustments. I'll actually tile my screens here. Again, while that camera is selected, I'm going to use the number three on the keyboard, which is a break command. While the camera is selected, I'm going to go ahead and press the number three on the keyboard, create another break right in this area near the wall corner. And let's go ahead and slide our camera up through that main entry wall. And now you can see the entry wall appear in the section view. And I'll just go ahead and continue around, select the camera. I'm going to come in here, put a break in this area. Now you don't have to be too exact because you can always adjust this a little bit later. Go ahead and pull this through the wall that will be in the office. Zoom in and now you can pull it where you want. So if I want to go on the outside of that wall, I'll just snap that corner. Again, I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to create a break over in this area, pull it through the master. And again, I'm just going to kind of zoom in and snap it to that corner of the wall. And then one final break over here past the end. And then I'll just pull this all the way up through the master closet. And again, I'll snap this onto the wall. And then let's fill our screen with section view. Now you can see the section view has most of the information you want. Some of the information, if you look above the garage, actually has some of the framing from the floor platform. And then above the entryway also has some information you may not want to see. Now for the garage area, let's zoom in here a little bit. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the rectangular polyline tool. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to create a box that will go around and cover up what I don't want to see. I sometimes call this my digital whiteout. While that is selected, 
Let's go ahead and open up this CAD box. And all I'm going to do is create a white fill in here. On the line style, I'm going to go ahead and change that to just be a white. And then on the fill style, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to create a solid fill, change the color fill to white. That's created a mask around those components that I don't want to see. Now let's go ahead and fill our screen. The other areas are the attic walls that are above the entryway and also above the master. I'm going to eventually do the truss framing, which we'll see in the next video segment. There are not going to be attic framed walls. I'm going to delete the framing out of those walls by going back into the plan view, and I'm going to delete the framing for those two walls, the blue wall and then the pink hatched wall. Up in the framing menu, I'm going to choose a general framing member tool, hold my shift key down, draw a marquee around those framing members, and then press the delete key on the keyboard. I'm going to do the same thing for those framing members on this wall. Again, hit the delete key and remove those framing components. Back in the section view, you can see the elongated framing section of that entire run. You can use the rich text tool then. If I come in here, apply some text in this area, let's go ahead and we'll type in some text. You can use that as your call out for your header openings. And then like all section cameras, you can easily then send this out to your layout at whatever scale you want. And if I open up the page 11 of the wall framing, you can see that's exactly what I've done to create this wall section for the front, the back, some of the side walls. On the bottom wall down here, this is a concrete wall that comes up that's actually ahead of the framing. And all I did was use the glass camera view and send it out as a glass camera view so you can see through the components where these framing members come in and reach the platforms. And also then added some of the key dimensions in here so that it was obvious the way this wall was going together. To support the framing underneath the balcony, you can see in the image that the walls are stepped back over the top of the garage. And on page eight of the construction drawings, in the lower left section view, we have the posts that are supporting the I-beams. I'll show you how to place those. And then in the middle section on the bottom of the screen, I'm going to show you how to actually place the I-beams in the design. In the completed model, you can see the I-beam, how it's supporting the joists that are stepped down between the balcony and the inside of the house. Underneath of the balcony, we have the posts that are supporting the I-beams. I'm going to go ahead and open up the model and show you the steps involved in placing those objects. To generate a 3D framing view, there is a camera specifically for 3D framing. That's going to give you an entire view. A lot of times what I'll do to generate the framing just for the floor is I'll choose the perspective floor overview camera, which is going to generate Typically your default will, might look like the camera view. I'm going to change the layer set to just use the 3D framing set. That will quickly change those components. The default beams that were placed between the two platforms, I'm going to select those and I'm just going to delete them and go ahead and remove them out of the design and then I'm going to return back into the plan view and draw that beam. Let's go back into the floor plan view. Before I draw that I-beam, I'm going to go ahead and define the defaults for the I-beam. Underneath the defaults menu for the framing section, I'm going to go to the beams panel and I'm going to go ahead and edit the beams. I'm going to set the depth for the beam at 14 inches and then for the width, I'll go ahead and set it to five and a half inches. The type of structural member will choose an I-beam. And when you draw your beams, there is an option underneath the options component here where you want to place those with joists or under joists. I have them with joists so that's going to be embedded in the ceiling for the garage in that platform. With the framing default set up, let's go ahead and choose the floor and ceiling beam tool. I'm going to come down here and draw the beam and then I'll go ahead and draw one more beam over here. We'll extend that to the end and then finally one more beam that will connect the two right in this area. And then you can see that framing back in the 3D view. And that I-beam is in line now with the joists. Those joists actually lap into that I-beam slightly. Let's go back into the floor plan view. That I-beam is a five and a half inch I-beam. If you wanted to trim those up, remember the flanges on the top bleed into or over the top of those joists. But if you wanted to trim those off, you can zoom in here, select the joist. You can use the trim tool and come in here and trim this off. Just slide a line through here and trim those off if you want to do that.
If you're curious how I created the hangers for the joists, also the symbol that I use for the top of the pan deck and then the concrete slab, the pan deck is nothing more than a symbol that I placed and then the concrete is a concrete slab that I cut back and pulled back. For the joist hangers, those are Simpson hangers. You can come in here, you can search for that, you can see the object and I'll just show you real quickly how I place those in the plan. That joist hanger is in the Simpson Strong Tie catalog, which you can download from our 3D library. If you know the part number for that unit, you can type it in here, search, and once you've located it, you can then place it. Let me go ahead and zoom in here and place that. Once it's placed, I want to make sure the elevation is correct before I do a multiple copy. I'm going to take a back clip cross section, and then I'll just go ahead and pull that up where I need it to be. And then I may need to resize that just slightly. I'll go ahead and pull that up, and then back into the floor plan view, I'm just going to use a multiple copy and set that to be every 16 inches on center. With the hanger selected, let's go ahead and use the multiple copy tool in the edit menu. I'm going to load 16 inches on center and then I can just simply drag a various copies of those joist hangers down. And that was the process I used. I wanted to generate this and actually I exported it out as a 3D viewer model so the subcontractors could see exactly how this went together. Next I'm going to use the post tool and put a couple of posts that are at these intersections of the I-beam. Now if you know ahead of time you can set your defaults for your posts. Again underneath your framing in the posts area let's go ahead and change the post defaults. I'm going to change that to be five and a half inches square. I'll go ahead and leave it to lumber. I'm just going to use the material painter and make that adjustment. But if you care about the materials, you can come in here and change that. Next, let's go ahead and place our post. And rather than using a post with a footing, there is a footing that's going to be required. I'm going to draw that separately on the foundation plan. I'm just going to use the post tool, come in here at the intersection, and place the post. And then I'll place one more post in this area, and then we'll correct the sizes and the materials back in our 3D view. I'll go ahead and pull the top of that post down to the bottom of the beam. Again, in an elevation view, you'll be a little bit more accurate about that. I'll go ahead and pull this one down. This will be tough because I can't really see it very well. We'll pull it down and assume that's at the top of the beam use the material eyedropper from the steel from the I-beam and we'll apply that to both of the posts. Next I'm going to go to the floor plan view and then down to the foundation. On the plan view let's go down to floor zero. I'm going to change the layer set to the foundation set. With the slab tool I'm going to come in just draw out the slab and then we'll use the dimensions down here. Let's go ahead and use the extra diamond and we'll create our dimension off of here. Go ahead and pull up one more dimension off of here. While the item is selected, let's go ahead and set the dimensions. I know that this needs to be positioned at 6 foot 8. I'm going to use the fourplex move handle to reposition the slab. And then finally, let's select this edge up here, and I'm going to type in the dimension that needs to be 6 feet. And then I'll repeat that same process using this dimension. Take advantage of putting the move handle and dimension over here. And again, select the slab itself. I'm going to set this to be 10 foot 5. Again, using the move handle itself. And then on the edge of the slab, I'm going to go ahead and set that to be exactly 5 feet. Back in the 3D view, you can take a look. And one final thing, I need to set the thickness of that slab to be 12 inches. The minus 4 inches down here is going to be below the garage floor. And that's the last thing we need to do. And if I return back to the floor plan view, let's use our back clip cross section camera here. And then I'm going to isolate my layer set to the framing set. And from here you can verify that all of your elevations are correct. You can add your dimensions and your callouts. And this is how I produce the drawings you see in the screen. Again, if I zoom in down here, I've just cropped this. And that's how I've generated that information using the text tools and the dimension tools. And if you want to get a closer look at that, that's page 8 of the construction drawings. Well, that wraps up the framing section for the Grandview Build House for Homes. We started with our wall framing, beginning with automatic wall framing. We ended up switching to the manual framing. We made sure that we verified the openings and the headers, looking at the spans, and then overriding it on a per object basis for the garage doors, entry door, other windows that may need specifics. I showed you in the detailed elevation views how you can open up an individual wall and look at the framing detail. And then I used the back clip cross section camera and the brake tool to extend so you could get an elongated view of an entire run of a framing wall. And then the final step was to place our garage I-beams and posts. In the next video I'm going to take a look at an additional framing for stick framing the roof and truss framing the roof. Thanks for watching.